Hey, welcome back to the channel, Getting It Done. Today we're gonna get it done. We're gonna get it done by just talking about fall patterns and techniques. You know, we talk a lot about, you know, lures to fish for fall and, and you know, transition into fall and what basically happens. And really, what I was gonna wanna talk about is fall time, what happens in the fall time, you know, what happens with these bass and, and what, and a proven technique or the technique that we should be using or the pattern that we should be looking for in the fall time. You know, and again, you know, we're transitioning through and not every part of the, the country is going to transition at the same time or the bass are going to transition at the same time. You know, probably down south it's going to be later and later. You know, up north it's going to be happening pretty soon. I mean, it's really, the equinox is, you know, the same amount of uh, night, nighttime is as there's daytime. That means it's cool. The weather changes. It gets cool. The leaves start to uh, change. The leaves start to fall. That means, you know, again, those cool nights are going to drive that pond temperature down. You can still get some hot days, and you still get in the 80s and 90s, but again, that nighttime and that coolness, because there's more, you're going to start September 22nd, I believe it is, you're going to start having more of that nighttime. It's going to cool that pond down. Those bass are going to move in, and they're going to be looking to feed, and, and they're going to look in the feed to get fat for the wintertime. And what I think the misconception for a lot of people is that, you know, when those bass move in, that they, they move back out, like, in October and they just in and they move back out and and i've actually i don't believe that's true i've actually had success all the way up through november i actually had success when it was snowing out those bass are still up tight up and against the bank or cattails or lily pads and again just because it's snowing out you know one day doesn't mean you could have at least for me you could have 50 you know temperatures in the 50s and 60s the next day it drops down and you get some frost and then you know you might have a couple bad days and it goes back up to the 50s and 60s yeah, that temperature of that pond really didn't change. You know, I, I've been, I went on fishing a couple times. <laughs> There's some hand warmers in there. It's like, hey, yeah, done, son, let's go. Yes, sir. And, you know, I'm fishing, fishing, and, and I crushed it. So, you know, again, bass will hold tight. And, you know, in, in my mind, the bass hold tight up into that bank. And when they transition into that bank for, for pretty, quite a bit of time. And, you know, as far, I think as, in my opinion, they'll stay up there as, as much as they can until the water gets too cold and then they then they push back out. So you're gonna have, that's one thing to kind of look at. So that's a pattern, you know, and bass don't transition in at the same time. Just like when they spawn, it's not all the bass spawn at the same time. You know, the spawning are, you know, again, you, typically it's a full moon, and it's the water temperature, and then you start to see them move up and spawn and stuff like that. For the fall time, you know, the pattern or the technique that we're, we're talking about is really fishing a whole pond. And what I mean by that is, you know, once you get, you know, September, and you get, again, you get those cool nights, those bass will start to push up. And some of those bass will transition, and they'll transition from the depths. They won't transition all the way up into, into the bank all at once. It's not like they're going from deep, deep water, and the next day they're up, they're up against the bank. Uh, majority of the times they'll, they'll be in that, you know, especially those big females will be down deep in a cool water, and then they'll try to start to transition. And when they transition, they transition into different uh, different pockets of water. It's not straight to the bank. They might transition, you know, 30 feet off the bank, and they might suspend there, and that's where the bait fish are. And they might be there for a couple of days, and then they slowly transition up to the bank, and eventually they they they'll, they'll go up to the bank. But not all not all the bass are going to transition all the way up to the bank. As, as they all move up, we're just looking for bait fish and looking to feed. Typically, what when we're talking about that in a pattern, we're literally looking when you go around that pond or that lake. You should, you know, I'm always looking, and I'm looking for see where where those bait fish are. For me, majority of it's uh, bluegill. Uh, that's that's typically majority of the bait fish around me is bluegill. And I'm looking if I see those bluegills pushed up really tight up against the bank. Yeah, you know, I'm like, okay, those bass are going to be up. And a lot of times you'll see those bass just, just swimming around that bank and, and you know, I was like, okay, they're, they're transition. They're, they're gonna be pretty tight up against that bank for a while. But again, what I'm looking for is bluegill, bluegill activity. You know, I'm also looking for, a lot of times I just look for like bluegill jumping and, and feeding. Sometimes they're just 10 feet off, right? They're just 10 feet off the bank. I'm like, okay, the so bass should be right, right off of that, right? It shouldn't be, I mean, they're gonna be a little bit off of that. That's, that's what I'm looking for. That's the pattern I'm looking for. And when I start to fish, my pattern of fishing is I fish everything. What I mean, I, I, I keep everything true. So I'm, I'm, I'm fishing everything. And my technique is, and my, my technique is, depends what you use. If I go into a, a swim jig, is which typically is my favorite 
uh, fall lure because I can work at different depths and I'm looking for different depths and, I, and I'm fishing the whole pond and I'm casting out and if, and if I have hydrilla and I got hydrilla flats I'm, I'm fishing those flats I'm still fishing those flats even in the fall time when I bring that lure back through and I swim bait through I mean swim jig through I'm working all the way out and I'm working all the way in and again I'm going to cast again what if I go I always go left to right I'm going I mean a lot of times I'll start in the middle and this is what the little bit difference what I do in the fall time I'll start off in the middle and I'll go shh, shh, and I'll work way and I'll work my way to the bank come back and I'll work my way so I'm going out and then I go boom 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 and I'll go out boom 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 and I cover the I cover that whole section and I say I always say and even in my videos, keeping it true, keeping it true, is because those bass can be transitioned and can be in different parts of the uh, of that lake or that pond, and they're not always up on the bank. Sometimes you get those big females. I've, I've caught big females in, in late October, and they're still in the hydrilla, they're still in the flats of the hydrilla. It's, that's that, that's where they're at. Eventually, they're going to transition, or they don't need to transition. They got enough bait fish, and they got enough uh, things to eat that they don't need to transition all the way into the bank. So I'm keeping everything real. And that's my pattern, or that's my technique of fishing. I'm fishing the whole pond, and I'm, I'm using lures that I, could, that I could do that with. And another great one is a bladed jig. Boom, 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 bladed jig. Yes, yes sir, bladed jig. And I usually don't use top water in the fall time. And I know top water could be a great bait. I don't, I kind of start to get away from the top waters especially when I get later and later into the fall, because I want to work different depths of, of, of the pond or lake, and I want to work everything. And you can do the same thing with the top water. Don't get me wrong. If, if I'm having like a, a really good feeling, I might throw out a buzz bait or a whopper plopper, and, and I'm going to work that pond. But typically all I'm doing in that situation, I'm just trying to go one time around that pond you know, fairly quickly because I could cover a lot of water, especially if I use a, a, a buzz bait with a toad on it. Um, I, I could cover a lot of, I could cover the whole pond pretty quickly. And a lot of times you can catch some big ones. But for the majority of, of, of my fishing time, I'm spending, I'm usually going with a, a jig, a bladed jig, a, uh, a jackhammer, a timu, or a swim jig. If I really want to get into more or less, you know, if, if I really like swim baits, you know, here's another great opportunity to throw a swim bait. You know, I'll throw a swim bait out there. And, you know, again, Guggen, you could use Guggen, Saucy Swimmer uh, 4.8 is typically what I, I would throw. Gary Yamanudo, I love I loved the Gary Yamanudos, but uh, again, they're pretty expensive. But yeah, the Saucy Swimmers are, 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 are money too. So, what I'm also, all I'm looking for is let's, let's break it down. When, when we start to fall, Again, we're, we're looking at transition. So a lot of people say, oh, they're up on the bank, they're up on the bank, they're up on the bank, and that's all you're fishing is bank, 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 and that's all you're fishing. No, 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 no. You need to figure out, and the pattern that you need to work, and the technique you need to work is you need to fish the whole whole pond. Do I even have them here? Uh, I, don't, I don't think I have. Uh, lipless crankbaits. Lipless crankbaits is, is, a, is another great one that, that you could throw out. You could cover a whole, whole ton of water and a whole ton of pond, and you can work at different depths. And once you get a bass, hit that spot a couple more times because you're gonna you're gonna get them. You're gonna fire them up. You know, boom, 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 boom. Biggin, biggin, biggin. Just catching biggins all day long in the same area. They get schooled up. Once you catch one, they're aggressive uh, uh, fish, and then you'll be able to hit them up again. One, two, three. And sometimes you get three, four, five, six uh, different bass. Um, yeah six different bass you get six bass and, and, you're, and you're just getting it done so you really need to hone in on and that's why i like the those two boom 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 you catch one hit that spot again hit that spot again hit that spot again work at different depths a lot of, a lot of times in the fall times those bass will be suspended they're not up on top they're not always on the bottom sometimes they're just a little bit off the bottom or they could be a little bit off the top when i get to the bank and if I have structure on the bank, that's kind of where, you know, especially feeding time, if I get into the feeding time, I, I'm definitely hitting that bank. And, you know, again, I might work it close to the bottom, might work a little bit up, but, you know, for the most part, I'm working that bank. I'm just going, I'm reeling it in, uh, a bladed jig or a uh, swim jig. So work the whole pond. They transition at different times look for some type of structure if they when they start to move up look for those bait fish that's the key just look for the bait fish sometimes i don't even fish i just i'll walk around that whole pond 
And I, I'm just looking. I'm just, you know, got some, you know, I just got some glasses on, some sunglasses on. If it's sunny out, and I'm looking. I'm just seeing if I can find bait fish. And a lot of times you'll see bass. I mean, I don't know how many times in the fall times I'll be walking around and I'll just see a school of bass just swimming in and out of that shore. Just coming in, coming out, coming in, coming out. You know, they only go out like three, four feet. You know, they're swimming around. And you see all these bluegills around. That's, that's you know, that, that's what they're feeding on. And, you know, they're right up there. And, hey, they made that transition. I'm going to go back and maybe probably pitch a, you know, maybe like a, a swim jig there. Kind of, boom, catch them. Boom, boom, catch them. All right. And then, again, fish the whole pond. Fish, fish, fish the whole pond. From now in, until the whole, in, until it gets cold out, fish the whole pond. You know, again, it, if, if you go out and you're catching them on the bank, and then, you know, again, that, that, that might be your pattern the next couple weeks. Like, hey, I'm just going to stick with it. But don't be, don't go away from throwing out into the middle and working that bait through. And again, I, that's why I like to use a jackhammer or a bladed jig or a swim jig. Because I could, I could, or even a way, uh, lipless crankbait, because I could kind of work, could work that pond a little bit quicker. And that's what I'm looking for. So once I get a school of fish, or once I get a school of bass, I know I'm going to probably go in there. I know I'm going to catch more than one. I'm going to catch three, four, five, six bass in that one little area. I'm going to cast back out there, same depth, same same retrieval, and I'm going to catch them. Because I'm schooled up, you fired them up, and now it's go time. So again, don't always concentrate on on a shore. Find a bait fish. Look for the bait fish. Again, even if they're off offshore or whatever, or 10 feet off, you know where they're at. Concentrate on that fish the whole pond because they transition at different times. And that's the pattern. And, and that's really the, the, the pattern that you want to look at. That's the pattern that you want to uh, key in on. It's fall time. As far as lures go, I'll just say this thing about lures. It doesn't matter what, what lure you use in fall time. It really doesn't. Pick something that you like to use. Um, you know, again, for me, it's about covering water. They, they are going to eat. They're, 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 they're eating. They're, they're eating. They're, 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 they want to eat. They need to eat. So, again, no matter what you throw out there, you're going to catch them. So, again, I just like to use lures that I can kind of work a pond. I can work different depths of a pond, and, and I can kind of work it pretty fairly quickly. Again, I'm not rushing through and buzzing it. I just know that these are lures are a little bit more fast pace, or I guess, right? They're a little bit more faster, and I can cover a pond, and if I need to go through a rotation of lures, I can go through a rotation of lures, and I'm feeling pretty good, and I'm gonna fire them up. And again, you catch one, you gotta to toss right back into there. To catch two, catch, what's, what's my limit? I don't know. Again, it's a feel. If I go three casts in the same area, I cut one, I go three casts in there, and I, I don't catch another one, eh, I might try my fourth or fifth, but pretty much for the most part, if I, if I get past three, that's eh, probably not going to happen. But typically, you catch one, you throw it right back in that same area, the same retrieval, the same depth. Most likely, within the first two casts, you're going to get another one. And again, they're schooled up, fired them up, and you're going to get it done. Yes, sir. So that's it. Uh, that's the pattern, right? Boom, 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 boom. Go back, boom, 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 boom. Pick up your bag and go. Same approach. Fish the pond. Look for the bait fish. And when they move up, again, not all bass are going to move up. Not all bass are going to move up at the same time. So just work different depths of the pond. Stay true to the pond. Fish the whole pond. And basically, pick a lure that you really, really like and you're really, really comfortable with. And just fish that. And just fish it. And fish that pond. Fish that lake. And you're going to get it done. That's how you get it done in the fall. That's the fall pattern. That's the technique that will guarantee you to catch more bass. Getting it done. Yes, sir. That's how you do it. Don't forget to like. Don't forget to subscribe. Comment below. And I appreciate everybody for all the support. And thank you. And we'll catch you next time.